brothers and sisters, let us prepare for a prayer. Dear Father Yahuwah, our Almighty God in heaven, we thank you for all the blessings that you have showered upon us. We thank you, dear Father, for always keeping us safe from any harm and dangers. We thank you for we still have our life and strength. We glorify, we magnify your most holy name. May you please forgive us, dear Father, for all the sins that we have done. Please cleanse our hearts and our souls so that each and every one of us may be worthy as we continue to worship your most holy name. Dear Father, we are now going to study your holy words. Please bless each and every one of us. Please grant us the knowledge and wisdom that we need so that we may fully comprehend your teachings. And please bless our dear brother whom you're going to utilize today as your instrument. Please, dear Father, bless him with the wisdom coming from you. And please guide him with the power of the Holy Spirit so that all of us may be strengthened in our faith. Dear Father, may also please bless the offerings that we set aside so that they can be used to all of its needs. And please also bless the livelihood of your people, so that not only we are able to sustain our daily needs, but most importantly, give you offering worthy of your holy sight. Dear Father, we faithfully believe that you are listening to our prayers. Please be, be with us throughout the duration of our holy gathering. All of this we kindly ask and beg, only in the name of our Lord, your Son, Yahusha HaMashiach. Amen. Once again, we shall study God's words in this part of our worship service. Now, we are always uh, flashing on your screen these verses in Proverbs 4, 20, because it is vital for each and every one of us to learn, to remember, and to keep in our heart what God is saying. See, God is always telling us, pay attention to what I say. Pay attention to what I say. That means, beloved brethren, we have to focus on what God is saying. It actually uh, going to be discussed today in our lesson. The, the title of our lesson is right there on your screen. You know, that focus and look forward to what lies ahead. That is equivalent to what God is saying. Pay attention to what I say. So focus and look forward to what lies ahead is what we are going to discuss in this homily or this worship service. In simpler terms, beloved brethren, this means we will only ever find what we are looking for if we focus and look forward to what lies ahead. As others say, our habitual point of focus can be likened to a pair of glasses with colored lenses. Whenever we put the glasses on 
everything we see is tinted with the color of the lenses. In the same way, whatever we spend our time focusing on will certainly determine the color and texture our life takes on. This is another very important reason to give our sincere efforts into cultivating a positive, happy mindset, focusing on what lies ahead. The more we decide, beloved brethren, to focus on feeling good things, the more these good feelings will show up in our environment by the way of our wrath. Our point of focus, beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, our point of focus also determines the thoughts that occupy our minds. Our thoughts create our reality and our thoughts are determined by our point of focus. This is also one of the reasons, beloved brethren, we are being reminded to acquire the right frame of mind. That's what we must acquire, the right thinking, the right frame of thinking, or the right faith. Now, what is the right frame of mind that we, as followers of Yahushua, Hamashiach, must have now that we are one of those whom God has chosen part of the very small remnant to continue his work in these last days. Let us begin reading what the Apostle Paul said here in Philippians 3, 13 to 16. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it but I focus on this one thing. Now remember what the apostle Paul said there. I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Yahushua HaMashiach is calling us. Let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress. We must hold on to the progress we already made. Now, what is the right frame of mind that we as followers of Yahushua HaMashiach must have? Now that we are one of those whom God has chosen, we are now part of the very small remnant that will continue his work. The Apostle Paul said, he's forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Now, where should our focus be? He said, reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize. That should be our focus. To reach the end of this race and receive the heavenly prize. Now that prize, beloved Bridget, we already learned that prize is to meet the Lord in the air on the day of the first resurrection or on the day of the rapture. Now, how can we achieve such a goal? We must, he said, he, we must hold on to the progress we have already made. Paul's goal is perfection. But he has not reached it yet. He is not faultless, nor does he expect to achieve perfection before his death. Instead, he uses the analogy of a runner in a race to depict the motivation of his spiritual life. Now, why did Paul say he's forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead? 
because that's the race that he is now running to. Now, what did God command his people in the scriptures? Let us read Isaiah 43, 18. And this is what we can read, beloved brethren. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. That's an instruction coming from God himself. Do not dwell on the past. But Yahuwah says, do not cling to events of the past or dwell on what happened long ago. What's for the new thing I am going to do? It is happening already. You can see it now. I will make a road through the wilderness and give you streams of water there. Beloved brethren, what did God command his people in the scriptures? Why did Apostle Paul say forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead? Because God instructed his people in the past and his people today, that's us, beloved brethren, to forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Yahuwah says, do not cling to events of the past or dwell on what happened long ago. Watch. That's why he said, for the new thing. Why? Well, I am going to do it, and it is happening already. There's a new thing. There's a new thing. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Now, why is the Lord against us dwelling on the past? But because, beloved brethren, doing so can cause us to get stuck where we are. When our focus is on the past, it's too easy for us to feel sorry for ourselves or to focus on our regrets or to think that our best days are behind us already. Worst of all, dwelling on our past can make us feel unthankful for all of the blessings in our lives especially the blessings we have in the present day. The new things that God has made for you and me. Beloved brethren, from 2015 up to this date, we have already made lots of progress in what God wants us to accomplish. We must hold on to that. That's the point. That's why we are studying this lesson. We were able to worship and give honor to the name of God without breaking any law of the land. We have learned lots of things that we do not know before. God taught all of those things to us. He created new things and he allowed us to know it. We don't want to dwell in the past anymore. We keep on moving. You know, it is recorded also by John 423, the time is coming when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. We are so familiar with that verse. In fact, that time is now here, the scripture says, and these are the kind of people the Father wants to be his worshipers. The one who will worship him in spirit and the one who will worship him in truth. Now, how do we worship God, beloved brethren, in spirit? Yahusha clearly stated, hallowed be your name. We worship God in spirit by worshiping his name. Did God reveal his name to you and me? Yes, his name is Yahuwah. We have learned that. Unlike when we were still in that institution, in that iglesia, the Christian, we don't even know the name of God. But we know he has a name. And what did those people learn in that religious organization? Oh, one minister, one of their ministers even said, God has many names, but he has no personal name. What kind of a teaching is that? He got many names, but he got no personal name. Now, whose names does, does God use? That's the question. You see, but we have learned that God has a name. And his son's name is not Jesus. He's not his, his son's name or the, the, the Christ's name is not Jesus. It's Yahusha. How important is that name? 
Well, Yahushua, we keep on telling us before, there is no other name given to man for their salvation, but the name you have given me. Your name, Yahushua said, that you have given me. What's the name of God? Yahuwah. What's the name given to him? Yahoo. Yeah. What does that mean? It means I am he who saves. See, we learned that, beloved brethren. We have learned that. In the past, we don't know that. So we forget that past. Now we look forward on what God will still going to say. Yeah. Tell us. Now, what could be the uh, deterrent or the hindrance that we could not focus on to reach the end of this race that God placed before us. That's why God is instructing us to the Apostle Paul. You know, I have forgotten in the past and I'm now focusing on what lies ahead. So what could be the hindrance? What could be the deterrence? The deterrent that we could not focus here. Matthew, it's on your screen, 1623. But Yahushua turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind. You are not setting your mind on things of God, but on things of man. So what could be the deterrent that we could not focus to reach the end of our race? When Satan begins setting our minds on things of man instead of things of God. That's why Yahushua HaMashiach told Peter, get behind me, Satan. He was victimized by this kind of thinking. Peter the Apostle. Now, how did Satan break Peter's mind? Why, how was he victimized? By Satan. He was an apostle. He was supposed to know what's right, isn't it? Well, how was he victimized? Let us read Matthew 16, 21, 22. <clears throat> From that time, Yahushua began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside. Now remember what Peter did in this part of the story. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. So how did Satan trick Peter's mind? How did Satan make certain that he will be hindered to focus on what lies ahead? How was Peter being victimized by the arch enemy of God, the devil, by thinking that he was doing Yahushua favor by saying, far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Now, the expression, heliosoi, that's Greek, literally means mercy on you. That's what Peter told him, mercy on you, an abbreviation of may God be merciful to you. May God mercifully spare you from this. That's what Peter was saying to him. Some English versions render it as God forbid it in uh, GNT or uh, uh, Good News Translation. Or far be it from you in uh, ESV. Or oh no, Lord, in HCSB or CSB. So these were the words Peter told Yahushua Messiah. God. May God mercifully spare you from this, from that day. And what did Yahushua tell him? After he rebuked him, saying those words to him, let's go back to the verse that we have just read. In Matthew 16, 23, it says, But Yahushua turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. <laughs> he was called Satan. You see that, beloved brethren? Did Yahushua, does Yahushua don't know that he was talking to Peter? He knew. He was talking to Peter. But why did he say, Satan, stay away from me. Get behind me, Satan. Is that Satan? When Yahushua responded to Peter, remember, he told him, 
Stay away from me, get behind me, Satan. Now, how did actually Peter rebuke Yahusha in that particular part of the story or what the Bible is telling us? Well, he took him aside in private. So Peter took Yahusha privately and told him what he thinks that should have happened to him. And then he was branded, he was told by Yahusha, he was rebuked by Yahusha. Behind me, Satan. And when Yahusha responded to Peter, did he also, when he responded that, did he also like took Peter privately? How did that happen? Let's see the big picture here. What, how did that transpire? In another verse in Mark 8, 31, 33, let us read that. <clears throat> And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. And he said to this plainly, and he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. So that's what had happened as recorded in, in what we have just read in Matthew, right? So it, it was now recorded by Mark. What happened there was recorded by Mark. That's what we are reading right now. But in 33, turning and seeing his disciple, turning and seeing his disciple, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. So our question is, when Yahushua responded or, or rebuked Peter, did he take Peter aside too? No, he did not. He did not do that. Yahushua did not do that. Yahushua's response to Peter was even more drastic. Get away behind me, Satan. Whereas Peter's rebuke of Yahushua was given privately. Yahushua's rebuke of Peter was delivered in front of all the disciples. Turning to confront Peter face to face and looking at his disciples, Yahushua rebuked Peter. Why did Yahushua do that? It was a message relevant to them all, a message they all needed to hear since Peter had simply been their spokesman as so often. So Peter must be rebuked right and then. Now, what was the rebuke? Behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind. You are not focusing your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. That is so dangerous, beloved brethren. If we focus our minds on the things of man, no wonder why we are always being reminded, be like a Berean. Focus on what God is telling, not on what the preacher is actually reading. Read it again. Heck it out. The Bible is always telling us, test all things. Test and prove all things. Don't just believe it, beloved brethren. Let us not be gullible that we are going to believe anything that was sent to us. That's not being a Yahushian. Focus. That is what the Apostle Paul said. And that is also what God is saying. I am making new things. Forget the past. Focus on the present. That's what God is saying. Beloved brothers and sisters in the faith. We are learning lots of things. Since 2015. That was six years ago, I believe. Did Apostle Peter literally become Satan? When Yahushua told him that get away behind me, Satan? Why did Yahusha call him Satan? Let us read, beloved brethren, to what we can read. Second Corinthians. 11, 14 to 15, and 1 Thessalonians 2, 17 and 18. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Now remember. What the Apostle Paul was saying here. No wonder. Right? For even Satan. Or si Satanas. Disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise. 
if his servants, his servants, also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. So Satan has servants too. Satan was not by himself. It is no wonder even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if Satan's servants or his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. But since we have torn away from you, brothers, for I, a short time in person, not in heart, we endeavored the more eagerly and with a great desire to see you face to face because we wanted to come to you. I, Paul, again and again. But Satan hindered us. So did Apostle Peter literally become Satan? No, he did not. Now, why did Yahusha call him Satan? Because his action was Satan's. You see? Peter wasn't Satan. Now, why then Yahusha called him Satan? Because at that instant, Peter became like God's adversary. Now, Satan, what does it mean? That term Satan, it's on your screen. There is a meaning of that word, beloved brethren. That's Greek, right? The term Satan actually is called Satanas. It was originally a common noun meaning adversary. That's what it means. But it became a proper name or title for the accuser or slanderer or diabolos in the heavenly court. And more generally, the arch enemy of God and his people. What does Satan incite? Satan incite humans to sin, not to think the way of God, but to think things of man. That's Satan's job, beloved brethren. Satan is so smart, he was so wise that we must be wiser than him to overcome him or to win over him. In the present case, Satan uses Peter's natural human instincts, right? Satan used Peter's natural human instincts, abhorrence at the prospect of a friend dying a cruel and premature death. Remember in our worship service in the last Bible study, uh, Yahusha told his disciples, I'm not considering you as servants. You are not slaves anymore, but you are my friends. So Yahusha declared that his disciples, his followers are his friends. And that is exactly what Peter actually felt that he's a friend of Yahushua HaMashiach. But when Yahushua, but when Yahushua HaMashiach said, you know, I have to go to Jerusalem. I have to die there. And then in three days, I will be raised back to life. Well, as a friend, di dying a cruel and premature death, Peter said something that is actually not of things of God, but things of men. It should not happen to you, Lord, as a friend. That's a human instinct, right? That's human instinct, natural human instinct, a reaction of a friend to a friend. When your friend says, you know what, I have to go there, I have to die. Oh, don't go there. That's the, that's the reaction that we could have. Peter was actually rebuked by Yahusha when he said that. Because he was actually tempting Yahusha to abandon his God-given task as the suffering servant destined to die for his people. See, that's the design of God for Yahusha to fulfill. You must die. You must die there. That's the things of God. You must die there in, in a very uh, painful death. People will murder you there. But you have to go there so that you can die for the sake of our people. That's God's way. That's God's things. But the devil is going to use somebody, a friend, an apostle. So that Yahusha will be tempted to abandon his God-given task to die on that cross. 
That's why when Yahusha heard what Peter told him, he said, Satan, you Satan behind me. He knew it was no longer Peter say, talking to him. It was Satan talking to him. You see, we could have the same kind of feeling, beloved brethren, without even knowing that we are being utilized by the devil. That's why we are studying this very important message. As Yahushua said, Peter was viewing matters from a purely human and popular perspective, not from God's perspective. The question is, are we as Yahushans today using human and popular perspectives in our service to God? Are you using? You think, beloved brethren, we are reminding you to investigate and investigate and focus on the scriptures, what the Bible is saying. Does that mean anything? It means a lot. Because the devil can come into our minds, even in a very small window of opportunity that he could ever have. That's why we are being instructed by God himself. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Focus on what lies ahead, not on the things that were already behind you. Now, Peter was victimized. Peter was victimized. He's an apostle. He's a spokesman for many of the apostles too. But he was victimized by the devil at that point of his life for simply saying things that he thought is giving Yahusha favor. So before we say anything, we have to look back to what we have learned first, beloved brethren. What did we learn so far? What did God say in the past? Are we focused on what God was saying? Beloved brethren, because some of us tend to forget what we were already instructed to do and to believe. That's why we are repetitious in saying these things over and over and over again. Because Satan is so smart, he's so wise, that even a very small window, a tiny window of opportunity he can get into us. Now, how else? The Satan disguised himself as an angel of light. <clears throat> now remember also what was said, <clears throat> right? That uh, it is no surprise that his servants also disguises themselves as servants of righteousness. <laughs> servants of righteousness. Now try to remember what was just said right there. But let us answer this first. How else does Satan disguise himself? as an angel of light. And who was another victim amongst the apostles of the Christ or Hamashiach was victimized by Satan. John 12, three to five. Mary, that's Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene is the one being referred to there. Took a very expensive bottle of perfume and poured it on Yahushua's feet. She wiped them with her hair. And the sweet smell of the perfume filled the house. A disciple named Judas Iscariot. Oops, you are so familiar with this disciple. Judas Iscariot. See who does Iscariote? <laughs> was there. He was the one who was going to betray Yahushua. So we know who is this Judas, right? And he asked, this is what he asked. This is what Judas said. Why wasn't this perfume sold for 300 silver coins and the money given to the poor? I don't imagine what he said, right? Judas did not really care about the poor. He asked this because he carried the money bag 
and sometimes would steal from it. You see, how else does Satan disguise himself as an angel of light? Uh, who is another, another victim of Satan? Another apostle who got victimized? It was Judas. Because he got, he's not focusing on what Yahusha was to be to accomplish. He was not focusing on what uh, God was actually was telling him through the, the, the through Yahusha Hamashiach. Well, actually, he became the uh, treasurer of the uh, movement. You know, all of those offerings goes to him and he is the, but I could actually what we have heard there, it sounds like the uh, uh, apostle Judas Iscariot, right? Uh, really care for the poor by saying, you know what? We have to, why wasn't this perfume be, you know, sold for 300 silver? Why don't we just sell that perfume that is being poured on your feet, right? And help the poor. But actually, according to what we have read, Judas did not really care about the poor. He don't really care about people. He asked this because he carried the money back. He was the, the treasurer. He carried the money back and sometimes would steal from it. He actually stealing from it. So that's his campaign. You know, let's let's propagate more. Let's let's have more money. That's what he was saying. That's the devil. You see, that's what happened when people are now focused on man's things. Money. Money is man's thing. Remember what the scripture says too, beloved brethren? That the root of all evil is what? Money. Now, there are lots of preachers today. They keep on complaining. Hey, you give more offering. You give more offering. You give more offering. Well, we are not against offering. That's God's instructions. That's God's commandment. God even said that I am truly pleased with that kind of offering. But there are rules about offerings that you must follow. It's not just like a preacher will just keep on campaigning or go to you and give you a, a, an envelope so that you can actually put your offering and tells you, you know what, if you will not increase in your offering, then you are not being blessed. This kind of thing, beloved brethren, is no longer things of God. It is things of man. So that they can sustain their own satisfaction i want to buy this i want to buy this i want to be to have a big house i want to have a swimming pool in my house i want to have a jet so i can travel all over the world there are preachers who fell into that kind of category beloved brethren why but because satan in that window of opportunity came in so their focus which is supposed to be what god is going to preach to them what god wants them to do and what is going to do for them is no longer there. Their focus is now different. See? But they claim they are Yahusha's servants. They claim they are Hamashiachim, or in the term that is so popular today in our time, they claim they are Christians. But what is their focus? Where is their focus? See? To enjoy life. To the people who they are actually supposed to be caring for. That's why one of the instructions to some of the preachers, to the preachers of righteousness, do not rule over those who were given unto your care. Don't be a ruler. Administer, but don't be a ruler. See? There is only one ruler. There's only one teacher. There's only one head in the body. There's only one brain in a human being. The command center is the brain. And all of us are equal brothers and sisters. We are all the same to the side of God. You're a preacher, you are not a ruler. You preach what I want. That's what God is saying. Tell my people what I say. Focus on that. You don't rule over them. There is only one king that I place before you. And that king is the king of kings. That's my son, Yahushua HaMasiyah. And all of you are part of his body. 
Why is it that there is somebody, especially in the church where we came from, someone is playing like the head. Oh, I don't play like a head. I'm preaching that Yahusha is dead, but you're acting, you are the head. See, <laughs> you are the one who can register somebody in the book of life by registering that someone in your registry. You are the one who can erase somebody from the book of life by erasing somebody in your registry. That's what you told people. And you say, we are Christians. We are followers of Yahusha Messiah. You really are? If you truly follow him, he said, respect your mother and your father. Did you do that? I don't know. You're the one who can answer that. See? <clears throat> Our perspective must be God things. Right? Use God's things in our perspective, in our as perspective in our services to God. Don't be like those apostles, you know, although they are good apostles, they are actually like good people, but the devil was able to get into them. So, beloved brethren, if we are not going to be very extra careful and we are not focused on what God is telling us, the devil can easily what? Lure us away from God. Now, when does a preacher or God's steward fall into lure of Satan? Like what happened to the Apostle Paul or the Apostle Peter and Iscariot or the Apostle Judas? Well, let us read Titus 1 7. This is what the Apostle Paul said. <coughs> For an overseer, <clears throat> as God's steward, must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or a drunkard or violent or greedy for gain. For the overseer, as God's steward, must be blameless, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not addicted to wine, not violent. Not greedy for dishonest gain, but financially ethical. You know, financially ethical. Let's talk about that for a while. What's that does it mean? If it doesn't belong to you, don't spend it. You, you know, the church is money because we were instructed to give offerings. But that money is to be utilized in the service of God. Now, if you are performing your duty, you can use that. To perform your duty, not for your private entertainment, not for your big mansion. You see, there are people who are doing that here in America. There are lots of pastors, preachers who are now so rich that we can call them now billionaires and millionaires and billionaires. Why? Because people are so gullible to believe what they are saying. They did not even investigate. So these preachers have their own mansions. Or they will buy a mansion in the name in the name of their their religion, but they will be the one to live in there. That's why there is a law in the land that you know if you're going to buy a building, you cannot utilize that building for your own personal gain. You see, that's that's the law here in the land because that's that doesn't belong to you. That, that you, you cannot use that as your residence unless you declare it as a personage. You know. But a mansion, okay? Why do you need a mansion? Why do you need a big house? See, these are questions that we have to ask because we have to focus on what God is saying. When does a preacher or God's steward fall into the lure of Satan? There. Not addicted to it. When he became arrogant, you became arrogant. You became like a powerful man. And when you walk, you wave your hand like that. Seems like you are the king of the land or of your own turf. Wow. That is exactly what God doesn't like. That is exactly what this verse is saying. You are so arrogant. Well, let's continue reading. And he must be hospitable. You must be hospitable. To believers as well as strangers. A lover of what is good, sensible, upright, fair, devout, self-disciplined, above reproach, whether in public or in private. 
he must hold firmly to the trustworthy word of God as it was taught to him so that he will be able both to give accurate instruction in sound, reliable, error-free doctrine and to refute those who contradict it by explaining their error. You see, now we are going to uh, take a look on what these verses are actually telling you and me, beloved brethren. A steward of God or God's steward must be hospitable. You know, in Tagalog, it says, you know, you are welcoming everybody in your house. Why is it that you build a mansion and you put a high wall and a gate and a security guard that nobody can get in amongst the brethren? And in order for you to be visited, you have to be in that office that you are supposed to. Why can't they visit your house? The Bible is a hospitable. In another translation, in Tagalog translation, you can check it out. He opens his house to everyone. See? Now, if a preacher is opening his house to everybody, right, that, that house doesn't actually belong to him, but it belongs to the people of God, well, there's something wrong with that, right? Now, another thing, lover of what is good. Is it good not to take care of your own family? Is it good not to take care of your own mother? Is it good that to uh, give freedom to your own siblings? Well, if that is good for you, I don't know what is bad now. <laughs> Sensible, upright, fair. Are you fair? See, is your leader fair? Are your ministers fair? Hmm. Devout, self-discipline, above reproach, whether in public or in private. It means, you know, above reproach, you are e you know, easy to, to take a hold on to. Right? It means you're not, you're not above reproach. It means that there's nothing that uh, other people can say bad about you. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy word of God as it was taught to him. The words of God were taught to us. So that he will be able both to give accurate, remember that, accurate instruction in sound, reliable, error-free Doctrine, error-free doctrine, sound and reliable. Let's go back to Matthew 18, 18, that we are questioning about why the Iglesia de Cristo said that there is a power given to their leader to register you on earth so that you can be registered in heaven to remove you on earth so that you could be removed from the book of life in heaven. Where did you get that? And then you are going to read inaccurate, inaccurate, not accurate doctrine, Matthew 18, 18. It's an accurate doctrine if you explain it right, but you explain it wrong. Now the people believe you got the power to register their names in the book of life. That's what they believe. And that's what we are now questioning. We are focused on making certain that that doctrine will be questioned by many people. Why? Well, because God said clearly, think of things of God through Yahushua. Remember what the, the Yahushua HaMashiach told Peter? You become Satan if you are thinking of the things of man, not the things of God. These are the things of God that every preacher, a steward or God's steward must make certain that he is giving accurate instruction in sound, reliable, error-free doctrine and to refute those who contradict it by explaining their error. That's why we are explaining your error. Why are we here? Are we just attacking you? No, we love you, brother. But you made a big mistake. Based on what we can read. You see that? We love everyone who is a part of our faith. That's why we are sharing what we learned. What God showed us, the new things that God showed us. We are not going back there, but we will move on. And we want you to move on too, beloved brothers and sisters in the faith. Don't get angry with us. Don't be upset when we are telling you this truth. That your leader is actually 
telling you or instructing you an accurate, inaccurate instruction, not sound doctrine, unreliable, erroneous doctrine is what he's giving each and every one of us. That doctrine about salvation, that doctrine about registering people in the book of life. That's an erroneous doctrine. That's not an error-free doctrine. A steward of God is being expected. You see how Satan can easily get into our minds? Look at that. He's already making lots of mistakes, but we still agree with him. We become gullible because we believe, oh, he's the man of God. He will never become wrong. He's not going to commit mistakes. You see, there was even one minister who went to Rome, I was there in Rome, who said, when God, when the administration said it is white, although it is still red, or if it is red, although it's still white, when he says it's red, it's red. What kind of doctrine was that? That's fanaticism. No human being can do that. You see? You be, they became so arrogant. They became so greedy for this honest gain, financially unethical, using the funds that the Iglesia members or its members gave in the name of God for their own private entertainment. That's what they did. That's sad. Not only that religious group, but all religious. Religious, many of those established religious organizations, organized religious churches. That's what they did. They have always big edifices, they have power, and they have clout and many things. That's not the way it was designed. That's not the way God designed things. Our focus should be the, the, the truth. Focus on Yahusha and Yahuwah, not on the one preaching. Remember, we are always being reminded, the one who plants, the one who waters, this is not important. Who is important? Yahuwah is important. You see, those servants of God <coughs> who are no longer giving instruction in sound doctrine, twisting the message to gain an advantage for himself. You see, just try to imagine you know, when Yahusha was talking about taxation, he was actually being framed by, by, by these uh, Pharisees and Sadducees when he was asked of a question, teacher, should uh, we pay taxes to Caesar or should we not? I think that was a trick question because, you know, when, when Yahusha answers them, oh, you're not supposed to give taxes. Who will be... A, angry with him. He could be charged of something else by the Romans. The Romans will become angry with him. So he could be charged of that kind of thing. And then if he answers, oh, give the taxes, then the Jews will be upset of him. That's why he asked them, okay, give me a coin. So they gave him a coin and he showed to them, who is inscripted on the coin? Whose picture is in here? And then the people said, Caesar. So here it is. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give to God what belongs to God. So he was talking about taxation. But there are preachers who twisted that. Yahusha was talking about taxation. He was being asked about taxes. But there's a religious organization today who used that differently to gain advantage for himself that now he has a clout over these political figures right that these politicians can come to him ask for his help now he is like oh wait a minute right look at this this is a president that wants my help look at that and who gave that power to him gullible people. Us, we should have questioned that if we are only focused on what God is saying. We're not focused. Many of us were not focused, but God said focus. Now is 
God is actually showing us the right way. Why? Oh, I'm making new things. Now, what kind of followers will be produced by that kind of preachers or by that kind of sermons? You know, arrogant, not giving the right instruction or sound doctrine, twisting the message. Let us hear what the Apostle Paul has to say again, beloved brethren, in 1 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy 6, 3 to 5. Some people will teach what is false and will not agree with the true teaching of our Lord Yahusha the Christ or Yahusha HaMashiach. You see, Paul already knew, he wrote it. Some people will teach what is false. And even in our time, there are people who are teaching what is false. It's not actually biblical. There is no sense to what they were talking about. There is no, no logic in what they're telling people. Just try to imagine telling people on the day of judgment, we will be saved on that day. The king will separate the sheep from the goats. And then the gullible people will say, yes. And the king will tell to those who are in his right hand, sheep, come into the kingdom of my father and inherit the kingdom. And to the goats, stay away and be there into the lake of fire. You will be doomed forever. So they say, we are the goats. No, we are the sheep. That's what they were saying. Okay, you're the sheep on the day of judgment. That's what you believe. Who are the ones who will be included in the first resurrection? Oh, we are the ones too. How did that happen? You were already included in the first resurrection and then on the day of judgment, you will actually be separated from the goat. You were already separated. On the first resurrection, if that's what you believe, you cannot put both together. It's not going to happen at the same time. But that's what we believe before, beloved brethren, because the teachings that were given unto us is not accurate. Why? God left that organization already. That is exactly what Brother Eranio G. Manalo was telling all of us when he was still with us. Apostasy will knock on our doors. But I'm not afraid no more because you were taught. Not all who were taught actually learn. There is a very few remnant who actually learn. And that's us. And God began telling us new things. Let's continue. They will not accept the teachings that produces a life of devotion to God. You see, their life is not devoted to God. Actually, they are devoted to their leader. They are proud of what they know. Oh, we are going to be saved. They are proud of that, but they understand nothing. They do not understand anything. You as a member of that religion, you asked us before, before God actually chose us to be part of the very small remnant. We don't know anything. We don't even know that Yahushua's reign will be here on earth. We thought Yahushua's reign will be in the holy city. He cannot reign in the holy city because there is one king in the holy city, his father. So his reign will be here on earth, what we call the millennial kingdom. For a thousand years, he will reign here. He's going to become king of kings and lord of lords. He cannot do that inside the holy city. They are proud of what they know. They thought we know, right? But they understand nothing. But we do not understand the way God will actually bet out salvation or judgment. They are sick with a love for arguing and fighting about words. Oh, look at that. Those ministers, they always want, oh, let's debate, let's debate, let's debate. There is one, he, that's his favorite. There is one minister, I know, he, that's his favorite. He even studied Greek, they say, and he studied Hebrew, they say. But when a preacher actually asks him, please read that in Greek, and he cannot read it. Oh, that's so embarrassing. They are sick with the love for arguing and fighting about words. And that brings jealousy, quarrels, insults. They are insulting us because they can no longer what? Answer our question. They are insulting us. 
and evil mistrust. They are always making trouble because they are people whose thinking has been confused. Look at that. They have lost their understanding of the truth. That's what they have lost. They think that devotion to God is a way to get rich. You see that? that they fell into that category. The devil went into that very narrow window to trick them. Very narrow. You believe that that person will not make mistake? Didn't you ever, beloved brethren, realize, and that is the Catholic Church doctrine, that their Pope is infallible? Now you got the same doctrine that your executive minister, who is not supposed to be him, is infallible too. He cannot commit mistake. We left the Catholic Church and became one at, with them at the very end. We keep on attacking the Catholic Church. But do you actually know? <clears throat> do you understand that the name Jesus was given by those people? The Latin people? It's okay to rename your name yourself if you if you agree with it, you're the one who renamed yourself, probably that would be fine. If Yahushua actually, oh, okay, my name now is Jesus. Well, I will agree with that because it was Yahushua who changed his name. But if some people change your name, but you are not agreeing, that's a different story. Those people changed the name. <clears throat> when he was introduced to the Greeks, the Greeks gave him a name because the apostle Paul told them he is the son of God. And the Greeks used their tradition of oh, the son of God is son, the God is Zeus. So his name must be Jesus. So the Greek gave the name Jesus, and then the Catholic Church, the Roman Empire, he used the Latin word. Oh, let's remove I and put J, Jesus. And then it was propagated all over the world. And then here's the church, the Iglesia de Cristo, which was prophesied before, there was a prophecy for them, that that's the name of the savior. They will say, oh, those are false prophets. Oh, but the false prophets is telling you the name of the Savior is Jesus. Do you believe it? Yes. Why are you believing them? Have you ever questioned that? Well, anyway, our answer to that is during the time Brother Felix Manalo was starting, God allowed him to use that. Because there will be a time God will make new things. That's where we are focusing now, beloved brethren. Does it make sense? Now that we know there is a name of the Savior, the name of the Savior is not Jesus, because Jesus does not have any meaning. See, followers who do not understand anything, <clears throat> that's what we, we will become. <laughs> that's the question that we raised a while ago. What kind of followers will be produced by those kinds of preachers who are twisting the message, who are giving no longer a sound doctrine, doing financial and unethically moves. You see, financially they are unethical. They will produce followers who do not understand anything. That's why, you know, when we do missionary works, when the people, we warn people about them too. If you can listen to anybody you like, but this is what you want to question them. If you meet these people, question it to them. The scripture says they are proud of what they know, but they understand nothing. What they know is that they will be saved on judgment day, but they don't understand how judgment will be meted out on that day. They do not understand that salvation and the day of judgment is not through the shed blood of Yahusha. They don't understand that. You could also be saved on the day of judgment. You could also be uh, considered by the king as the sheep on the day of judgment, but it's no longer through his blood because on that day, the day of judgment, the way you will be judged is when your book of Acts will be open. So the book of Acts and the book of life both will be open. If you have done good deeds, then your name will be written in the book of life. 
You see, it's no longer the blood of Yahusha that will save you there. The blood of Yahusha will save those who truly belongs to him. That will be on the day of the first resurrection, not on the second or the, the second uh, resurrection or the day of judgment. So that's what they don't know. They miss a thousand years or more than a thousand years of wisdom. They miss that. But we as Yahushans, we even know what kind of blood we're going to have in that. We already know that, you know, that the, 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 the seven year tribulation, if we were able to meet the Lord in the air, we are no longer to be included to suffer that seven year, seven year uh, things that is going to come, the tribulation. It will happen, but we're not going to be part of that anymore because we already met the Lord in the air. See, they don't understand those things. You can read that in Revelations 25, 6, and then 12, John 5, 28, 26. We are giving it to you so that you can have a time to read what we were able to find out, beloved brethren. We are sharing it with those people, with our loved ones, with our friends, those who we love. The members of the Iglesia de Cristo, we love them. Our friends, our loved ones, our relatives must know this, that what was taught to them is lacking a big chunk. That's why they don't understand. But they are proud that they know many things, but they don't actually understand how is it going to happen. See? So Revelations 25 to 6, and then 12, John 5, 28 to 29. I'm not going to read it anymore, right? So you can read it. For they do not know that those who will be saved through the precious blood of Hamasiah and the grace of Yahoo will be given to those who were added to the prophesied church. That's the church, right? Purchased with his blood, his church, his body. And we have already studied why was it likened to a body? There is a function. Well, the church today, the Iglesia de Cristo, has its function. It doesn't function the way the body should function. There is one member or part of the body who is acting like the head. He even took the title of the head. What's the title of the head? The executive minister. You see? In Tagalog, there is a passage in the scriptures. You can find it. You can Google it. Yahushua Hamasiyak said, Ang lahat ng kapamahalaan, all authority was given to me here on earth and there in heaven. So siya yung tagapamahalang pangkalatan. He is the tagapamahalang pangkalatan. Based on the Bible, ang lahat ng kapamahalaan sa langit at lupa ay binigay sa akin. Hindi sa'yo. Hindi ikaw ang pinagbigyan. Ikaw ay isa lamang parte ng katawan. Pero umarte ka na ikaw ang ulo at ang tao naniwala doon. Doon sumunod. So, the devil actually came in. But God said, okay, focus now on what I'm going to I'm going to create new things. In that wilderness, I'm going to give you something. God is telling us now. See? Rapture, when it comes to rapture, you know, God put those who will be saved in the church. We all believe that. Acts 2.47 and 1 Thessalonians 4.16.17, those who are being placed by God in the church daily that will attain salvation will meet the Lord in the air. See? And there is a rapture. Actually, if you're going to read Matthew 24, 13, 40, 42, let me read this thing so that you can actually read it. It's not going to be on your screen, but I'm going to read it to you. But if you keep on being faithful right to the end, you will be saved. Be faithful right to the end. Be faithful to God, not to a man. See, always think of the things of God, not things of man. Two men will be in the same field, but only one will be taken. You see that there are two men, according to the Bible, on the same field. One will be taken. One will be raptured. The other will be left. Two women will be together grinding grain, but only one will be taken. One will be raptured. The other will be left. So be on your guard. You don't know when your Lord will come. We don't know when is that going to happen. But what we know, it is clear. In the scriptures, it is so near. But who will be raptured? Who will be given that 
first resurrection reward, those who truly belong to Hamashiach, the part of his church that move on, that focus on the new things. Why were they not able to know the, and understand these instructions, beloved brethren? Because they have lost their understanding of the truth. Their leaders think that devotion to God is a way to get rich. That's what their leaders already taught of. They are, that's why they are enjoying lots of things right now. What is it that Satan may use to lure us away from Yahuwah's command? Here in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, each of you must make up your own mind about how much to give, but don't feel sorry that you must give and don't feel that you are forced to give. God loves people who love to give. Now, what we are, we are studying now is about our offerings. The devil also saw an opportunity about this thing. That's why we are being warned. What do many people who saw those who were actually taken out from that institution. So, corruption. We know that. We saw that. The misuse of funds. We saw that. <clears throat> now, when they are preaching about that, what is the reaction of many of the people who were plucked out from that organization? <clears throat> oh, that religion now is just about money. When you think that way, the devil again sees an opportunity, a very small window of opportunity. See? I'm not going to give any more. I'm just going to move on and do whatever I want to do. The devil is right there. Why are we reminding this to you? Because whether we like it or not, giving an offering is part of our worship. Why did, we, why did we first register a foundation? Because we want to worship God completely. And to worship God and to thank God completely, we must bring an offering. And we do, beloved brethren, that the devil will actually ride on that thing. He will take that opportunity to lure us away from that truth. Look what others are saying. Oh, pera pera na lang yan. All religions are like that, pera pera na lang yan. It's all about money. It's all about money. No, it's not. We are not against offerings. We are against spending it wrongly, misusing the offerings. That's what we are against. God is against that, but he is not against of being generous when it comes to giving. You see, did we change? How do we believe it before, beloved brethren? How do we believe that before when we were still in the institution? But the devil went into that. And now do we believe the same thing? Or did we change? How are we giving now our offerings? That's the question. We have to focus to what God is telling us. And we have also to focus on how the devil is going against what God is telling us. Without us knowing that, we will be lured away from God. Like the apostles who fell into that category in the one point of their life. But it doesn't mean they will not attain salvation. No. God is just telling us, you see how cunning my arts enemy is? That's why I want you to focus on what I am telling you. Because if you are not focused, he can easily get on to you. When we think that giving an offering is not to be done anymore, or it might be squandered by religious leaders. And there are some people who are making stories about us. That's why we made certain that the one who will audit our offerings is the government of the United States of America. Because if we misuse the fund, whoever will misuse the fund will go to jail and be locked up. Why did we use it that way? Why we, did we not say, oh, there, we should go to that uh, kind of way that there should be a separation between church and state. So the state will never actually, you know, look at our fundings. No, we report it every year. How did we spend it? Did we spend it the way it should be spent? 
or did a preacher actually use it for his luxury? There are people who are making false statements, and that is blasphemy to God, and that is against the law when somebody makes up story that isn't true. That's why we have to focus on what we are doing, beloved brethren. What did Yahushua remind all of us to inspire us not to give in to the lure of Satan? This is what he was saying. Listen, Revelations 21.5. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Making all things new. It's no longer the old ways. Right? So we put a, We put somebody... You know, to, to become a treasurer like Judas. And we put someone, we elected someone to be an auditor, which is actually auditor and treasurer. And he who sits on the throne said, behold, I am making all new, all things new. Also, he said, right, for these words are faithful and true. They are accurate, incorruptible, and trustworthy. Revelations 22, 20 to 21. He who testifies and affirms this thing says, yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Yahusha. The grace of the Lord Yahusha, the Christ, the Messiah, be with all the saints, all believers, those set apart for God. Amen. What did Yahusha remind all of us to, in, to inspire us not to give in to the lure of the devil? He said, you know, everything that I'm saying, everything that is new, I am actually making all things new. He said, these words are faithful and true. They are accurate, incorruptible, and trustworthy. That's the church of Yahushua today. Remember, God renamed us for one reason. So for our salvation, that we will meet the Lord in the air. We will be part of that shed blood, we will be beneficiaries of that shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. May this lesson, beloved brethren, inspire each and every one of us. We are the people set apart for God in our time. Do you believe it? I believe that. We are sharing it with you. You want to investigate more about what we shared with you? Go ahead. Are we telling you not to listen to other religious groups? Go ahead. And, and try to compare what you got right now with what they are telling us and what they are going to tell you more. It's up to you, beloved brothers and sisters. Remember that we have to work for our own salvation? That is very true in the church of Yahushua. I'm not working for your salvation. I'm doing all of these things personally for my own salvation. How about you? Are you doing your part for your own salvation? Salvation is not actually easy to get it's hard because we have to focus our mind should focus on the things of god not on the things of men not on human perspective but on god's perspective that's why we are becoming more biblical the more we study the more we learn in the scriptures thorough study that's what we are sharing with you, beloved brethren. May God have mercy upon us all. That he will continue to send us the Holy Spirit. To continue to learn about his will. If you have any question, beloved brethren, feel free to ask. And we will try our very best to guide you in the scriptures. We are not saying this is the truth. We are telling you, beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, this is what we can read in the Bible. This is what makes sense. And this is what is logical. Those three is what we are sharing with you. Because God will never teach anything that is, in, that is corruptible, that is inaccurate, that is illogical. He's not going to tell us those things. May God bless all of us. Let us all rise for our prayer. Merciful Father Yahuwah, with humility and meekness in our hearts, we say our prayers. Thank you for all of these instructions. 
you are so kind to each and every one of us. May we have learned lots of things today so that we get up. We will never be duped by your arch enemy, the devil. He is so wise, but you are giving us more wisdom than his so that we can overcome his tricks. We can win over the enemy. Father, thank you for making us your people in our time, for giving us this opportunity to learn your instruction, the new things that you have created. You have renamed us. You introduce yourself to us that your name is Yahuwah because you want us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Now we worship you in spirit. We worship your name, your name that now we know. You told your people in the past not to use that name. And they were so scared to mention that name. But that's not the way you want it to be. You want your people to actually utter your name. You just hindered them to use that to some particular people in the time of the olden days when they were worshiping Baal, not you. And you told them not to use your name. But you didn't allow your name from the book. You want people to know your name. And now we know your name. Some of our friends and loved ones doesn't want to accept that. But we will keep on telling them about you, Father, that your name is Yahuwah. And the name of your begotten son is Yahusha. And in that name, that salvation through his blood will be meted out. May they, Father, learn what we have learned from you. They are our loved ones. We are not their enemies. We love them so much. That's why we kept on. We kept on reaching out to them, telling them about you, telling them about what we have found so that they too will learn what we have learned. Yahushua, you are the throne of grace. We know that you are the savior. We know too how you are going to save your people. Father, please bless us as we separate our ways. Deliver us from harms and dangers. Give us, uh, Father, the things that we need every day so that we can always survive. Give honor and glory to you in a righteous manner. We firmly believe you have heard our pleadings. You will continue to be with us and you will continue to bless us and you will always take care of us. Father, we promise you, we will focus on what you're about to do for us. We ask in the name of your son, our Lord and Redeemer, Yahusha HaMashiach. Amen. May the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Yahushua HaMashiach, the love of our Abba Yahuwah, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us today and forever. Amen. Hey, beloved brethren, some few reminders. Please share our faith to others and you can worship via Zoom, the same channel. You can also share our website at www.churchofyahusha.org. And uh, you can also go to the foundation website if you wish to donate. And, uh, you know, if you when we are doing our offerings, this is where we go, churchofyahusha.org. If you want to donate for our, uh, uh, our uh, foundation, then you go uh, www.ofilfa.com. Our Bible studies will continue. 
our declaration of faith in our 101 Berean questions. Now, as we have promised you, beloved brethren, the declaration of faith will continue to, uh, to, uh, to be added. There will be an addition to that as we study. So that, that is what we believe in. That's what we are going to do as Yahushans. Now, growing up Yahushan can be viewed via YouTube and Facebook. That's for our children to learn the ways of Yahuwah and the ways of Yahusha. And also, 1 Timothy 2.1.2, it's always there on your screen. Let's continue to pray for our leaders, leaders who are religious leaders and also those who are leading every country so that there will be peace. May God continue to bless us and uh, continue to shower us his, his mercy. This concludes our worship service. May we all have a very good Sunday. Yeah.